born in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I was actually adopted at the age of six weeks. And it wasn't until I was probably six to nine months that my family started to notice that there was something different, something wrong. They, it was actually my vision that first cued them in to the fact that I might have a disability. And then shortly before I was a year old, I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and optic nerve atrophy. Um, and thankfully, uh, my parents were always very proactive and very engaging and always pushed me to, to be strong and to overcome my disability. Jennifer Maxwell, let's hear it for her. She will be a busy person this entire year. So, so Miss Wheelchair Colorado is really exciting and my goal number one is to first of all show people that it's not just a beauty contest about who's the prettiest girl in the in the wheelchair but it's really a it is a platform to bring forward important issues for women with disabilities and like I alluded to earlier that for me is about bringing social identity um, maybe the forefront is not the right word to use but at least um, a, to the same level as the other discussions around uh, race and, and gender and things like that so that women with disabilities can have a voice. Um, I feel like just generally that, that this is like the year of the woman that we've seen that in so many different platforms and so I feel like women with disabilities need to have a voice in that um, discussion around women of color, women of LG, LGBTQIA identities, um, and, and so many other women that have felt marginalized or feel like their voices have not been heard. Um, that's really what this platform is, is about and I feel like the disability group um, is one that is not always understood that the people mean well but they um, sometimes the language that they use uh, can be can be demeaning or degrading and not empowering so I really want to do a 180 with that whole mindset of um, taking that language away because something that is important to me is recognizing those identities, but also helping people recognize privilege because that's something that we talk about here at the college too. So here I'm the Digital Accessibility Coordinator and this is actually a brand new position so um, I'm really in a position uh, like my boss says you know we're innovators in this department so I've always had a passion for technology like ever since I can remember I mean even as a kid I was building um, you know model wheelchairs at home and you know, building little houses out of Legos. And I wasn't just playing with Barbies, I was building wheelchairs for them. And um, so I've always had a passion for technology and how to adapt it for people. Um, and, and as I got older, I was getting into computers and gaming and, and software. And I've always been, a firm believer that 
there's definitely an adaptive technology market and a need for that, but what's the most exciting for me is when you can take something, whether it's an educational tool or any kind of technology and make it into adaptive technology, that's exciting. Thank you.